Hi guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome to my channel. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you guys for popping in. Welcome to 2022. I'm a little bit of little bit late on the celebration. Uh, I decided to take some time with some family afterwards. We had family in town for the holidays and then I just wanted to spend some time with my kids and get them all situated back to school and whatnot. But now we're back to filming like normal, which is pretty exciting. I'm very, very excited. And I wanted to start off 2022 talking about my favorite plants of last year and which ones I am planning on getting more of this year and new wishlist plants that I'm planning on adding a new species or species that I haven't fully explored quite yet so I would really like to delve into more so that's kind of what we're going to be going through I guess it's sort of like a wish list slash goals planty goals for the year I don't know I don't really do the resolution thing so this is kind of my version of it I guess I don't know but yeah so that's what we're getting into today and uh, coffee all right and let's get into it should probably do a quick disclaimer I do not enjoy plants for their price tag. I do not get my plants for, um, I don't know, like street cred, like plant popularity will be in and out. So I don't pick my wish list plants based on how popular they are or whether they'll, you know, get me more views or whatever. I'm going to be living with these plants for the rest of my life or at least the rest of their lives as long as possible. So I'm very selective about my plants and I choose the ones that speak to me and bring me joy looking at them. And if they don't bring me joy when I see them or we just don't click very well and I just can't seem to get over that hump, then I will gift it to somebody else who will enjoy it more. So that's kind of where I'm going. So if you're going to, if you're going down this list and you're going to watch this video with the intent of having like high priority the top wishlist plants of 2022 like that's not what I'm doing here I'm just expressing my interests and what you can expect to see for the rest of the year on this sh channel um, and this is just a place of plenty joy so this is not a place for popular and expensive wishlist plants there are I mean like Kaylee Ellen she's got a great channel if you want to see the popular rare plants her channel is the thing for it. She's got everything on there. She's amazing. Um, that's just not where I'm at at this point in time. And it's just not my thing. Um, not that there aren't rare plants that speak to me, you know, I absolutely love some of those hardcore rare plants out there, but uh, I'm not going to go and hunt them down because they're rare. It's going to be because I like them and I plan to keep them and grow them. Um, yeah. So just tiny disclaimer there. So as for plants that I have experimented with in the last year and I would like to get more of, I definitely want to get more ferns. I am super, super into ferns, still am, have not lost interest in them. So I plan on getting um, the eyelash fern, there is some tassel ferns, some ribbon ferns, there's quite a few more. I also have a neon Boston fern that I've had my eye on. I ordered it last year and it actually died um, due to transit. So it came to me practically dead and I just couldn't save it. So I want to get another one of those as well. My tiger fern and my normal Boston fern are doing really well. So definitely want to delve into that a bit more this year. Honestly, I really do think that ferns are going to be taking off more and more. I think they're going to be really, really popular this year and that it would be a smart investment. It's really, really easy to grow and they're really, really easy to propagate by division. I think we can do amazing things with them and I want to delve more into that with you guys this year. Next, I have absolutely fallen in love with Syngonium. I've only gotten the common ones, the local ones that have just popped up here and there and I want to delve into them a lot more. I would like to get the Mango Illusion Syngonium. I have been looking at the Strawberry Ice Syngonium. It's beautiful if you can find the right genetic specimen. So I really want to look into that. I'm going to be very picky on that particular one though. The Syngonium Albo has come down in price hugely and I intend on taking advantage of that quite soon actually. I really enjoyed, I immensely enjoyed Tratoscantia last year. It was so fun to watch them grow so quickly and very rewarding to see their color changes in the sun. I am looking forward to getting more varieties. I have, I want to say 15 or 20, don't quote me on that because <laughs> I've lost a couple and gained a couple over months and I just don't remember. Um, but I definitely have quite a few and I'm very excited to get more. There is a couple of golden ones out there. There's some red ones out there that I would like to get. There is a purple fuzzy one out there that I really, really want. Um, it is overwhelming to say the least when you start looking at Tratoscantia because there are so many varieties. There are so many different varieties of Tratoscantia and they come in so many different colors. They are 
fast growing, they love bright direct light, they can go outside to inside, they can handle lower light, they just lose the coloration. So when I put these back out in the summertime, then they're going to get even more coloration, which is just so cool. And they're vibrant. The vibrancy of these plants is amazing. So definitely would like to get more of those for sure. Um, Calicia as well, they're a smaller form of Tradescantia. So I would like to delve into those as well. They've got some really pretty pink ones and a really pretty gold one I've had my eye on for a long time. So definitely want to look into those. I would of course like to get into more Peperomia. I am delving more into Terrarium, so I'm going to delve more into the Terrarium Peperomias this year. I'm pretty excited for that. There's quite a few skin dapses out there. Um, I have what I believe to be the Argirius and the Silver Lady, I definitely would like to delve more, not into the variegated skin dapses so much. Um, I don't know, they're, they're a little bit out of my price range at this point, but I would really like to look into getting more of the dark forms of the skin dapses and the skin dapses jade. I really love just the, that deep, rich color. <laughs> I don't know. Some people may find plain green foliage boring, but with the venation and the characteristics, the textures of the leaf, it's just really cool. I really enjoy it. So I would like to try more of those. Jewel orchids. I delved into jewel orchids a little bit last year. I got the Ludicia discolor. Update on that. That propagation totally rooted quite a bit. So I will show you that in the next video, probably. Um, if not the video after that. I'm planning on doing a vlog soon. So you will see it soon in the next one or two videos. So definitely want to get more into jewel orchids, getting more into terrariums. So I think jewel orchids would be a fantastic thing to get in. I do still have an intense love for Calathea and the Stromanthi and the Tenanthi. Uh, I would like to get more into the Tenanthi. There is a yellow variegated plant that's a Tenanthi called a uh, Never Never plant, I believe, uh, is the common name of it. So I would like to find that one, even a small propagation of that would be incredible. So there's also a uh, Calathea Charlie out there, which is just, oh my god, drool worthy. It's expensive for a Calathea, but still, oh my god. And then there is still the silver plate Calathea on my wish list. I still have not found it in the US. I have only found it overseas, so I'm still looking for that one. Um, yes, that the I could make a whole video on just wish list Calathea. So <laughs> um, the Dottie is a common one. It's very, very dark foliage with bright, bright neon pink. I'm absolutely in love with that one. I've been drooling over it. So I will be getting that one shortly, hopefully as well. And adjacent to the Calathea, there is a silver band Maranta and a black band Maranta. I have all the other Maranta and I'm still looking to get those ones. Uh, <laughs> so that's definitely on the list. Also, Hoya. I am super addicted to Hoya, but having researched Hoya more, there are so many Hoya out there. So many Hoya. Oh my god. I just, they can't even keep track of how many Hoya because the names keep changing. And they keep adapting and they keep discovering the new ones and <laughs> it's incredible you could have an entire plant collection of just Hoya I like other plants as well and I don't have the space for all the Hoya in the world and other plants too so I am going to be narrowing down my Hoya addiction to things like the Hoya linearis, uh, Hoya matilde, um, the Hoya Carii variegated. I really love the variegated look of those super chunky, thick leaves, just like my Hoya Obavada. Um, it's just, ah, uh, it, there's just something about a solid, chunky leaf with that green matte texture. It's just, ah, uh, gosh, I really dig it. Just Hoya like that, I'm um, going to be kind of getting into. There probably will be more as I discover and actually see pictures and look at the names. I'm going to narrow down that list more. But if you are just getting into Hoya, I highly recommend that you do the same thing. Unless you are planning on just collecting Hoya alone for the rest of your lives, there are just so many and they don't stay tiny. This is my Hoya Australis. I don't know if you can see this. It was a little two to three leaf cutting less than a year ago. And this thing is entirely encompassed a trellis and then some. Um, it grows really quickly. I know the number one complaint of Hoya floating around right there floating around out there right now is that they grow slow. They are not slow growers. Once they have established themselves and you give them the proper conditions, they grow big and they grow fast. So that is something to keep in mind. It might take them six months to a year to do something, but when they do, they go. They go like crazy. So definitely something to keep in mind. 
totally forgot to add that I really, really would like to get more begonia. Um, you can't see it right now, but the terrarium begonia are going crazy up there. And I plan on moving my kitchen begonia back up here and changing up their lighting so that you'll be able to see them more regularly than once every four or five months. So they're looking beautiful. And it's really cool to propagate them and then have them be mystery begonia and try to figure out what they are. So it's kind of like a fun game that I've become addicted to. So I will get more Rex begonia this year for sure. And probably more terrarium begonia since I just seem to be on a terrarium thing for now. I don't know. Other plants that I really enjoyed this year and I want to get more of are philodendron. In particular, the vining philodendron. I do want to get a Burl Marks Fantasy. I think I'm going to be sticking to vining philodendron like the varicosum and the melanochrysum. Um, I don't know, just the, I have a brandy eye. I would like to try the Rio and the Silver Stripe just to kind of compare them in person to the Philodendron Brazil. Um, yeah, they'd be really fun, I feel. I feel it'd be really fun to try that out. I think that's everything as far as the plants that I have uh, what I would consider an expertise in that I want more of. I've tested them, I've tried them, I've enjoyed them thoroughly, and I want more of them. So, and those are the specific narrowed down wish list ones of them. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So there is that. Uh, the next part of this video oops, is going to be plants that I may have dipped my toe in a little bit and just have one or two or plants that I haven't tried at all and I want to try. I want to give a try. The first one on this list is definitely going to surprise you. It's actually cacti. I have, they've always been my nope plants. My, I, people say cacti and I'm like, and they're beautiful and nope, not for me. But my husband gave me a brilliant idea that I really want to try out. He said, you like making terrariums, right? I said, absolutely. And then he's like, well, why don't you make a cactus terrarium, like a desert scape terrarium? You can get a heat lamp and you can research the substrates. And I just, it blew my mind. It's amazing. I am so excited to try this now. So I definitely want to get an old man cactus because he's got his little furry drapiness going on. He's just, oh, he looks so fuzzy and sweet, but then you go up to him and he's all grungy and grumpy, you know? <laughs> I love it. I really love it. I've been oogling one for a while now, but with kids and everything, I don't want to have them out. And then I am a klutz. But putting them in a terrarium setting, um, I don't know. I'm hoping the heat lamp will kill the humidity for the terrarium. I will have to look into that. Maybe I can have a heat mat under it. I don't know. So I will have to research more into that, but I'm really into the idea. And then there is a fairy castle cactus, which, oh my god, it was one of the first cacti I ever saw outside of your standard, you know, barrel cactus, right? And it's all pokey and spiky and prickly, but it really does look like a freaking Disney castle, guys. It looks like the Little Mermaid background, okay, without all of the inappropriateness. So, <laughs> It seriously does look like this cool castle. I really enjoy the look of it. So those are the two cacti that I want to get for that for sure. And then I will look into more. Next on the list of plants that I haven't really tried very much, but I would like to get into more is bonsais. Bonsais in particular in um, the cedar and the fir trees, redwood seedlings. Um, Emily turned me on to those. If you're not following her account, she's amazing too. She's doing some seedlings and she's going to be keeping up on telling us how they grow and what's going on with them and looked at the seedlings online, but I've never had the guts to try it. She went ahead, she did it, she's totally going with it, and she's inspired me to try it too. So I would like to give that a try this year. I do intend to buy at least two more bonsais that have been established and trained into being bonsai trees so I can learn how to maintain them better. I have been practicing intentional pruning and experimenting with them as far as my regular houseplants go. So I think I feel more comfortable trying it on something that is long term. Um, the thing with bonsai trees is they grow very, very slowly. So if you don't know what you're doing, you can make a mistake that can take years to correct. So it's very, very intimidating to try. Um, not just the keep it alive portion of it, but the actual shaping of it to make it what you envisioned in your mind. And it's very intimidating, but absolutely fascinating. I've been watching Nigel Saunders on YouTube for years, and his work is just incredible. He goes and he takes these plants and he makes all of these different landscapes with them, with these trees, and he just spends hours looking at this plant and saying, if I trim it this way, then it's going to grow this way. And if I trim this over here, then this is what's going to happen. And it's absolutely fascinating. And I want to learn how to do it more. So I, I think this year is the year that I'm going to be diving in, into that more. I also feel like bonsai trees are going to be one of those houseplants that is going to be really, really popular this year. 
Um, so if you're looking to find something that's a little bit more trendy, then I think a bonsai tree might be for you. They are very low maintenance. They don't need a lot of care, and they're slow growers. So as long as you can provide the full life that majority of them need, it will be good for you, I believe. My struggle is actually going to be that light, because in the wintertime for me, we don't get very much light. So I can find places for these bonsais that will, when they go dormant, I can put them, you know, in a darker, cooler environment. So I'm going to have to be very selective about the type of bonsai that I get so that I can keep that in mind in the wintertime. For example, I have a ficus right now that is not very happy as far as lighting goes, just because we haven't had very much. This is the summer that we've had in. I want to say a month and a half. We have not had very much sun at all. It's been raining and snowing and cloudy and just yuck. And the plants have not really loved it. I'm actually having to buy even more supplemental lighting than I did last year because we're having more dark on many days. Um, flooding is just crazy here in the Northwest at this point. So, but that's all I was saying. Um, definitely look into bonsai. I'm definitely planning on trying that. Just keep in mind your lighting needs and research the individual ones. This one means hotly divided up, and I've been to my couple of events for a downstairs my brick area where my woodstone and stuff is. It's a cacophony of plants. They have a huge inspired galaxy in them that is all spotted and speckled with white and looks like different galaxies on it. It just, they have a very good one. Very cool. Very good. Cool. Very interested in them. Um, so I'm going to look down at a couple of different varieties of those that I'm going to put downstairs to grow quickly and they grow fairly quick. So I feel like it's going to make that space kind of more lush and more green, but they don't need a whole lot of care like all those other things. They're really expensive as well, and nobody ever talks about them. I think it's because they are such a common plant that kind of overwhelmed because they grow quickly. They're just not given the respect that they deserve. I understand. So I definitely want to be able to get us this year as well. I also want to get more into the Raphidophora. You can see that I have a Monstera. I would really like to get into the Decursiva and the Siltipacana. Those two in particular look incredible. The variegated version looks amazing as well. So I really want to give those a try. From what I understand, they need a little bit, a little bit more attention than your standard Monstera. Um, so it'll be kind of fun to experiment with them a little bit more this year. I have only had a Monstera Deliciosa personally, so I have experimented with that quite a bit and we hear about them all the time, but I definitely want to get more into the Raphidophora and, um, you know, just the, the more difficult varieties. It's very fun. Another one that I want to get into that nobody really talks about very much because it's so common is Ivy. I really want to get more into Ivy. They say that they're spider mite magnets, but they said the same thing about Calathea and I haven't experienced that. So I have a feeling it has to do with cleanliness of the foliage and how dense you let it become. I feel like with regular pruning and regular cleanings, it won't be a problem. So I'd really like to get into some of those. They have some really cool kind of, I don't know what the name of the one that I saw was. I have to find it again. Um, I saw it in one of my shopping excursions in Walmart. <laughs> where you're just looking at the plants. I don't even think I filmed it actually, but it looked very much like the leaf that is used for the elves in Lord of the Rings, which just drew me to it instantly. I will have to see if I can put a picture for you, but it's just so cool. It was so cool looking and I really want to get more into that. I have had quite a bit of success from the little bit that I have of Anthurium and Alocasia. I have my Anthurium seedlings over there. They're growing very, very well. They're thriving. I cannot wait for them to get a little bit bigger and then I can gift them. Also, my Alocasia Stingray that my friend gave me is doing fantastic. I'm gonna have to pop that up out of Perlite soon because it's just, it's thriving. It's already almost outgrown that little pot. So I would definitely like to get more alocasia, in particular the alocasia dragon scale. Because I have a greenhouse in my own plant room now, I feel a little bit more comfortable having it. Um, and I will be able to put it in there and zip it up and not have my kids mess with it, which would be great. Although you might have noticed towards the end of last year that I was super into Serapegia. I still am. I am planning on hunting down more varieties of Serapegia. There is definitely more than just the String of Hearts and Variegated String of Hearts out there. So I would love to get into more. Um, they seem to grow really, really well here in my home and I love the cascading look. Maybe I'll even mix them in multiple pots or something. No, or we'll continue. <laughs> we'll figure that out as we go, you know? Um, 
but I definitely have a vision of a curtain of Serapegia. So even string of needles Serapegia linears would be an incredible addition to the four that I have already. With the summertime coming up and the springtime coming up, plant prices will be dropping more back to what they were. So only a couple more months and then we can go plant crazy. I definitely think now is a really great time for us all to narrow down our wish list plants and make sure that we get our eyes on very good venues and really good sellers so that way we can get prepared to pick up these plants as soon as the plant prices drop a bit more. I did order some plants now that the cold snap has gone away and I'm hoping that they'll come in soon enough, um, soon before another cold, you know, cold front hits us again. I am in the Pacific Northwest, so we had about a week and a half of just snow and sleet and ice. I was literally out there chiseling ice off my driveway so my car could get up our hill. It was not fun. <laughs> But it, it definitely prevented me from ordering plants, so that's something to keep in mind when we're ordering plants as well. But with springtime coming up, that's not going to be an issue. We can just go ham on these plants. So definitely, hopefully some of these wishlist plants of mine are going to make it to your wish list, or maybe if you have them, we can talk about trading. I would very much be interested in trading. Please contact me on Instagram or my email address and we can talk about it. I will let you go. I have yammered on long enough. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It's so good to see you again. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.